has an Indigo Minute featuring Jenny Han and Siobhan Vivian. Tell us a bit about your relationship with each other. We're frenemies. <laughs> How dare you? We're BFFs. We're BFFs. We're best friends. Yes. We met in grad school and um, we both loved writing for teens and we both loved shopping and eating nice dinners and it was a match made in heaven. How did the writing process work? Phones, emails, meetings? Did you own a character or collaborate for them all? It was all of the above. Yes. Right? Yeah. We um, were talking about the story for about a year and a half before we ever started writing it. We just worked on the outline and the characters and the beats, very detailed, and then we picked which scenes that we wanted to do. And so we have three different girls and three different points of view, but we didn't divvy it up according to that. It was just, what do you want to write? So that's how we did it, and then? We did a lot of phone calls. We did weekend writing retreats. We did Skype talks with each other. Um, you know, any sort of technology that we could use to bridge the gap. We live about six hours away from each other, so we would utilize that and um, try to keep the writing process as intimate as possible. Bird for Bird is about revenge. Have you ever sought out revenge on someone before? Mm. Yes. You yeah. have? Who? <laughs> My sister. <laughs> Uh, one time she wanted a glass of water and she was like four years old. You're old enough to go get your own water. And my mom was like, get your sister's own water. We were watching TV and I didn't want to like turn away. So there was a sink full of like dirty dishes and like soapy water. And I was like, heh heh. And I like literally filled up a whole glass of the soapy water and I brought it back to my sister and then she drank it and then started crying like big fat tears. Wait, it doesn't, to get revenge on someone, don't they have to have wronged you? What did she do? She was lazy. I feel like this is actually just no. a mean story. Where did the idea for the book come from? Um, well, as YA writers, a thing that we often do is think back to our high school days. And one of the sort of things that inevitably comes up for everyone is a hurtful thing that somebody said to you that you wish you could go back in time and like stand up for yourself. The novel makes comments on class, morals, and most of all, the way we treat each other. What are you hoping your readers take away from the story? I think, for me, one of the biggest things is, um, like when the whole series is done, to feel like, yeah, it's really hard. Those moments um, are really hard when somebody hurts you and is cruel to you and it's like humiliating. But then, you know what, like we have stories like that and then but we're still here and we're laughing about it now and it's still maybe like a little bit of a bruise a little bit of a tender spot but we survived and we made it and like high school actually isn't that long yeah. so just kind of like bear with it and you'll like make it through and you'll be okay and we also wanted to take a look at sort of the dynamics that sometimes happen in bullying where people who aren't necessarily the bully or the bullied you know, the periphery characters, how do they play a role in some of the hurt and some of those moments that, you know, wound people and just kind of casting an eye on, on the whole way that that plays out across the spectrum of, of people involved. And also the fact that it's a gray area too. There's not, it's not as easy as he was the, the bully and then she was the victim. It's, you know, pe people play a part in the whole thing and maybe he was bullied also or currently. There's a lot of nuance to it and I feel like because bullying is a hot topic right now it tends to fall in the black and the white and that's not how we view it. Do you see bits of yourself in any of the characters? If so, who? For me it's Lilia. Lilia is Korean American. She has a younger sister who she's close to and she's grown up kind of sheltered, um, a little bit privileged, a little spoiled. And for me... <laughs> She's also very sweet She's also and sweet very loving. And loving. And which she, is Yeah, like, she cares about our family. Yeah. So we did put a lot of ourselves into these characters. It's not like a coincidence. No, no. And for, <laughs> for me, I would say Kat is the character I feel most connected to. She is very tough and has a lot of bravado, but she's also very sensitive underneath that. And it's rare that she sort of lets that show to people who she doesn't trust. And I think that was a, a characteristic I carried with me through high school. What were you both like in your high school days? I was a goody goody. I was a bad girl. <laughs> we were polar opposites, kind of. Totally. Smart, bad girls. <laughs> like, you know. I was doing quiet, quiet you loud. You, I wasn't quiet. Well, you but probably not as loud as I was. Probably not. <laughs> you people are. Yeah. <laughs> opposites clearly attract. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you tell us anything about the second book, Fire with Fire? We can promise you romance, danger, 
we can promise you that Fire with Fire lives up to the title. We turn up the heat big time on all of our characters. A lot of love, a lot of broken hearts, a lot of uh, higher stakes. We are just getting started. If you two were to fight, who would win? <laughs> Probably Jenny, um, because uh, she's more. Hmm, uh, probably Jenny because she. I, I'm just quick to make up. I, I'm quick to make up. Right, but you're also quick to tell me when I'm like bothering you, and then I'm quick to change. So uh, I, I think I, we we might be actually a pretty even match, though. I mean, physically, I could take you. No, but, no, um, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm devious. She's a, she pinches. She pinches like a lobster. This has been an Indigo Minute featuring Jenny Hunt and Javon Vivian. What an end line. <laughs> she pinches like a lobster. And, ow, see? That was a fake